Well, the prize of everything is a documentary by Nathaniel Kahn about the uneasy relationship between art and commerce. He's focusing specifically on the contemporary art market, where, for example, Jasper John's 1961 Target, bought a little over 10 years ago for $10 million, is now worth 100 million. Art has become a commodity to be bought and sold, just like shares or futures on the stock market. As one commentator explains contemptuously, contemporary art has become a luxury brand, referring specifically to Maurizio Catalan's golden toilet, which now features in the Guggenheim in New York. With amazing access to artists like Jeff Koons, who, according to some, is in danger of becoming a lobby artist, endangering his status in the art market, like Larry Poons, who became popular in the 1960s but refused to cater to the market. He works out in the countryside, riding his motorcycle, just doing his own thing. He doesn't believe in the market, and the market apparently doesn't believe in him anymore. Others doing their own thing include Marilyn Minter and George Kondo. It's fabulous seeing him create a work of art. There are commentators from all sides of the art world, critics, dealers and collectors, the most endearing of whom is Stephen Edless, who's wry, pragmatic and a very interesting collector. He's the one in the film who talks about people knowing the price of everything and the value of nothing. It all started in 1973 when taxi magnate Robert Skull sold his collection and the prices went crazy, which made Rauschenberg a bit mad also, appalled at the prices for his work from which he benefited nothing until, that is, he sold another painting. I think this is a fascinating documentary. I love the insight into the world of art and the conundrum that is embedded in its current form. And I just loved seeing the art. Well, I enjoyed seeing the art too, and it's interesting that we see the art because a lot of people won't see the art. Because <laughs> the art, this is one of the interesting things that the film raises, that the, the art just disappears. If there are any masterpieces being created at the moment, and we don't know if there are, because these venture capitalists come along, uh, invade the market, and then just take these paintings away, or their sculptures away, and they're never seen again. So well, we, we, we're missing a whole, you know, period of, of, of art. But, but it's interesting because, I mean, what they're doing is out... Um, buying uh, museums and galleries. That's who can't but afford to the compete. The other point yeah. is made that the galleries, you know, they've got so it's much stuff that half of it is hidden downstairs expensive. anyway. Yes. Sixteen million dollars. You know, I mean, I just thought it was interesting. I mean, it looks like everybody's going mad, and a downturn is predicted by one of the dealers. Remember, he says he can he can smell the smoke. <laughs> Well, yeah, but it also raises notions of what is art. I mean, I tend to go with Tom Stoppard, who said a painting is something on a wall and a sculpture is something you can walk around. <laughs> I mean, some of, these, some of these pictures are really kind of really abysmal, uh, but someone has decided somewhere along the way that this is high art, this is art that's worth, you know, $50 million. I mean, Jeff Kuhn's stuff is absolutely ludicrous in so many ways. He's not even doing it himself. No, Renaissance masters, of course, yeah. didn't always do it themselves. Larry Poons, uh, on the other hand, uh, is lovely. I loved his work. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I loved him as a character. He's the saving grace for me in many ways of, of a rather incoherent film. Well, time, I film also times. liked Marilyn Minter because, I mean, you get at the fact that women artists have been tremendously disadvantaged in this, in this world as well. And I loved her stuff. I actually looked it up on the web afterwards to see whether I could afford one. And no, I can't anymore. You've got a spare 30 million <laughs> hanging around, Margaret. You must be much better paid in the show than I am. That's all I can say. <laughs> But I, it's sort of, I, I really love documentaries where I learn something, I'm informed and entertained, and I was with this. I'm giving it four and a half stars. I'm giving it four. They've tried to make it like the best artist is the most expensive artist. How could it be true? The art world is a very brutal place. Is it absurd? Yes. $30 million. So to you. Thank you very much indeed. There's a lot of people that know the price of everything and the value of nothing. <laughs>